Hello students, welcome to EPG Partshala. I am Dr. Dimple Khosla from Dyal Singh College, Karnal. Today we are going to talk on module Contingency Approach to Management from the paper Principles and Practice of Management. After completing this module, you should be able to understand meaning of contingency approach, features of contingency approach, limitations of contingency approach, relationship between contingency approach and systems approach, contingency approach and leadership style. So let us start with the introduction. Various approaches have been given by various scholars for management. Each approach has its own merits and demerits, but none of these approaches is that which we can say is suitable in all the situations. In an organization, it is not possible that every time same situation will come. So, the meaning of contingency approach, the word contingency means possibility. And in the broader sense, it means to be prepared for every circumstance and situation. This approach says that management principles and practices cannot be applied universally. So as per this approach, manager should take decisions not according to the principles but according to the situations. In this approach, manager first analyze all the prevailing situations and circumstances then applies the principles and skills of management according to the situation. So, a manager has to face different situations and this need of management is to be fulfilled by contingency approach, which is also known as situational approach. This approach has overcome the limitations of system approach, behavioral approach and functional approach of management. System approach has not fulfilled the condition of establishing a relationship between the organization and the environment. There are so many factors like environmental change, uncertainty, technology and the size of the company etc which actually impact the organization and all these factors should be kept in mind by a good manager. So a manager must analyze the prevailing environment and should take the decision accordingly. For example, Mr. X is running a vegetarian restaurant in a particular area. And he finds that his sale is not good enough as per his expectations because he was well aware of the fact that people in that area are very fond of restaurant foods and are the regular visitors. So he tries to find out the reason and after a survey he comes to know that most of the people lying in that area are non-vegetarian and he is serving only the vegetarian food items and then he immediately according to the situation changes his policy and what he starts he starts offering non-vegetarian food items too and within a few days he sees that his sales shoot up with a very good percentage why it all happened it all happened due to the applicability of contingency approach by the manager. Features of contingency approach. Number one, based on situation. Contingency approach is based on situation. It cannot be applied universally. It is of the opinion that there is not any single style which can be best suited to every situation. So, every manager has to make a deep 
analysis regarding the specific situations and then make his policy and decision. The second feature is provides solution. Contingency approach not only takes into account the situation but also provides the best solution according to the behavioral pattern of the organization. Interrelationship Contingency approach establish good interrelationship between situational variables and managerial actions. Since management variables are dependent on environment variables which are independent. The next is structural adaptability. Under this approach, a manager adapts himself according to the changed circumstances since contingency approach takes into account structural changes in the organization according to the changed environment. The next feature is practical approach. This approach is more practical because it changes according to the changed environment and do not stick to the outdated policies. Next feature is analytical. Since this approach tries to analyze the interrelationship between environment and managerial actions, it bridges the gap of existing practiced theories. Next one is suggest alternatives. This approach not only give quantitative and qualitative suggestions but also provide with a various alternatives that could be applied to a particular situation. Another feature of contingency approach is improved approach. Contingency approach is considered to be an approved approach because it provides a pragmatic method of recognizing and analyzing various subsystems of the organization, identifies their exact nature and tries to integrate with the exact nature of environment. Limitations of Contingency Approach Every approach has two sides. We cannot say that it is only having a positive aspect. So let us talk about the negatives. Number one is lack of theoretical base. The theoretical base is referred to the available studies on the concept. So many researches have been done in this regard, but no sound base has been provided by any of them, which can provide with the obvious action that could be taken in any particular situation. Number two, it comes difficulty in testing. It is very complicated job to test this approach because this approach is based on experience and practice. There is no set of principles for this approach. The third one comes is limitation of proactiveness. 
this approach does something when some situation arises. So what it means? It is reactive, but actually what is desired from a manager is proactiveness. This means he has to be aware of the probable changes in the environment and must be able to decide in advance that if such situation comes, then what could be done? Then it comes the tedious. Only saying that decide according to the situation is not a solution. It requires a complete analysis of the situation and managers do not necessarily always have time to go through all what is actually required. Therefore, to apply this approach in practice is very complicated and not simple. Relationship between contingency approach and systems approach. System approach has failed to establish a relationship between the organization and the environment. Whereas environment analysis is one of the major parts of the conceptual framework for contingency approach. It is the foremost duty of the manager to analyze the environment and take action according to the results of the analysis. Contingency approach follows the basic ideas and concepts given by the systems approach, but followers of contingency approach opines that system approach is not targeted towards the managerial action. System approach is more concentrated towards human behavior and the various parts of the organization. That is, how the various subparts are connected to each other, whereas contingency approach concentrates on structural adaptation of the organization with its inside and outside environment. It can be said that contingency approach has emerged and built up over the system approach. So, both the approaches can go together in an organization. A manager can decide within the various subsystems what different strategies should be adopted by him in different situations. Contingency approach and leadership style. Every leader does not suit fit to every situation. This style of leadership deals with searching for the leader which best suits the situation. When the behavioral theory failed, the researchers were continuously finding the style of leadership that was most effective in some particular situation. Effective leadership is contingent on matching a leadership style to the right setting. Contingency theory clearly examines the fit between the leader and the situation and provides guidelines for managers to achieve this effective fit. Most of the researchers believe that managers decide about their leadership styles depending on the leadership situations. Number of factors like nature of employees, 
type and complexity level of work, personal interests of the employees, policy of top management and organizational structure, etc., that prevail in a particular situation helps the managers to decide regarding their orientation towards decision-making and motivational approach. The situational theory can also be described with the help of the following two leadership theories. The number one theory is Fiddler's Contingency Theory and the other one is Hersey Blanchard Situational Leadership Theory. Fiddler's Contingency Theory Fred E. Fiddler's Contingency Theory is of the opinion that there is no best way of leadership style, which best suits to every situation. Managers has to apply different leadership style according to the different situations because the style which proves good in one situation may fail in some other situation. According to him, there are three elements that decide leadership style. These elements are task structure. What is task structure? It refers to the degree to which the manager are able to clarify the requirements of a task. So, everybody who is involved in a particular task must be well aware of what actually is needed from him and that the accomplishment of the task could be clearly shown. Number two is leader-member relation. Existence of leader is based on the followers. They have to work as a team. So, this relationship refers to the group atmosphere and to the degree of confidence, loyalty, dependability and support that the leader receives from his followers. If the relationship is positive or favorable, task structure is clearly defined and the manager will be able to reward or punish employees without any problem. But on the other hand, if the relationship is negative or unfavorable, the task structure is usually not clear and the leader possesses very limited authority. The third factor is positioning power. This refers to the extent of power a leader possesses in an organization. No manager enjoys unlimited authority. So this means clearing about whether a manager has the power of rewarding or punishing his employees. Also, has he the power to appoint any employee or to fire any employee? Depending upon the above three elements, there can be two situational theories. Number one is relationship-oriented style and number two is task-oriented style. Fiddler rated managers on the basis of relationship and task. He made two categories of managers, one consisting of those who were relationship oriented and other consisting of those who were task oriented. Relationship oriented style. Managers who are of this type believes in teamwork. They know the value of task which is to be accomplished while focusing on the individual interests of the employees. These managers 
perform better even when the task is unstructured low position par and a normal leader member relation the other style is task oriented style task oriented managers give more stress on the accomplishment of the task and know very well how to get the things done from others these type of leaders do better in the situations where the relationship between leader and the member is good the task is well structured and either weak or strong position par they also did well when the tasks were unstructured but position par was strong as well as when the leader member relations were moderate to poor and the tasks were unstructured relationship oriented managers on the other hand do better in all other situations the task motivated style leader always tries to accomplish his or her work well in time with good level of efficiency and feels satisfied only at the completion of the work while the relationship motivated style leader always try to motivate his employees for teamwork and give more and more stress to build interpersonal relations it is very difficult to say which of the two style is better since leadership is more or less based on personal traits task motivated leaders proves to be the best when their task is completed by their team successfully for example they achieved their sales targets or they captured the target market share relationship oriented leaders on the other hand proves to be the best when they are able to build a good public image and are having increasing number of satisfied customers the second theory is hersey planchard situational leadership theory this theory was propounded by professor paul hersey and ken blanchard with regard to the contingency theories the basic rule followed here is same that no single leadership style can suit or fit best to each and every situation a manager has to perform several tasks in an organization and according to hersey and blanchard different leadership styles are required for different types of tasks according to them the success of a task depends upon the two factors number 1 style of leadership and the number 2 maturity level of the followers they further classify these styles and maturity levels of the followers in four parts style of leadership is described as number 1 telling style number 2 selling style number 3 participating style and the fourth delegating style maturity level of followers are again given in the four types number 1 incompetent and unwilling number 2 incompetent but willing number 3 competent but not sure and the fourth is competent and willing 
Now, first of all, we will explain the style of leadership. The first style given was telling style. Under the style of leadership, leader just give simple directions in the form of what is to be done, when and in which manner he requires this to be done. So this style is also known as directive style. Instructions flow from leader to workers and they work accordingly. Second style is selling style. Under this style, the directions are given to the workers with some convincing force. The only difference between telling style and selling style is that the leader walks hand in hand guiding them what to do at each step. Workers are convinced that why they actually need to follow the leader. Flow of information is two-way. The third style given is participative style. In this style, leader also participate in the work as a part of the team. He builds and tries to maintain relationship with his team members. He also takes suggestions from them and thus this style is not just directive, rather collaborative. The last style is delegating style. As the name suggests, most of the work is done by the staff itself without even getting directions from their leader. This style works when the team is experienced enough to take the decision and to justify the responsibilities delegated to them by their leaders. The next thing given by the two are maturity level of the followers. Based on the above leadership styles, Hersey and Blanchard give four maturity level of the followers. These levels were given in the form of M1, M2, M3 and M4. M1. Incompetent and unwilling. These workers don't have any experience of work and they need directions at every level. Since they do not possess sufficient knowledge and are new to the work, they complete the work as they are directed. Telling style of leadership matches with this maturity level. As in this style, the employees are given directions for each work to be done. M2 stands for incompetent but willing category. These workers are a little more knowledgeable and experienced than those of working at level M1. These are the workers who know that they are not having the sufficient knowledge for doing the particular task given to them, but still they are very keen and eager to do the job, which is really very important. To this maturity level, the type of leadership style that matches is the selling leadership style. The third is M3, which is competent but not sure. At this level of maturity, 
the employees are knowledgeable and experienced enough to do most of the work at their own but side by side they are not sure about some aspect for which they need the guidance of their leaders the participating style completely matches with this level of workers since they are able to manage most of the work themselves and need a little help only the last category is m4 that explains competent and willing employees these employees are independent and are capable of doing their work without any supervision and guidance at this stage the style of leadership is very obvious and that is delegation once they are given the authority to accomplish the job they are sure about completion of the job and that too with efficiency the hersey planchard situational leadership theory matches different motivational level with different style of leadership according to them a good manager is always the follower of contingency approach and keeps himself flexible according to the situation so students let's now summarize what we have learned in this module contingency approach of management is more sophisticated as well as complex in nature this approach suggests that there is a direct relation between the managerial action and the environment according to this approach there is no single way out for every kind of problem or situation so what is to be done completely depends upon what actually is desired according to the situation thank you